Hello world! In this video I would like to take you on the journey how I made this 3D printed hand painted Catan board game with designs that I found on the internet and almost no experience starting out. I recently bought the Creality Ender 3 as my first 3D printer. As a result, I've spent a lot of time on Yagi and Thingiverse.com, as I'm sure a lot of you people in the 3D community are. There I have found the STL files to the 3D Settlers of Catan board game, as designed by the Kanzla. Immediately I was blown away at how artful some of those creations in the make section are. I love the Catan game. Uh, we played it countless times when I was a child and the, while the original game is still at my parents' place, my closet full of board games lacks this all-time classic. So I decided to plunge headfirst into this huge project. Let's go! The printer literally ran day and night for days on end. Because the files are made for a multi-material printer in mind, there are a lot of different components. This is to allow for more color variety in the final print. The harbors, for example, are made for, from the water tile, the harbor base and the harbor top. My Ender 3 can only print one color, making a lot of these components obsolete. So I have taken the time and I remixed the 3D files of the harbors so they are now printed in one go. This way I have successfully reduced the overall print time and prevented the need to glue some of the parts together. I now have a whole lot of these 3D printed Catan tiles, but they're all black, so they all need to be cleaned up a little and painted now. I've done some ugly model cars in the past, but that's more than a decade ago. I have literally no experience in painting on this level of miniature. So I had to do some research, aka watch some tutorial videos on YouTube. I felt confident enough that I could start my miniature painting adventure. I went online and ordered a small variety of miniature paint. I have all primary colors – red, yellow, blue, white and black. I also have brown, green and a black wash to finish everything off. But that's it. I didn't want to spend too much money on way too much fancy paints that I wouldn't use anymore after this project. Confident enough that I will be able to mix these colors to achieve a colorful end result. Aside from the paint, I ordered a spray-on primer, a value pack of three very fine brushes and a dull coating to finish everything off once the tiles are painted. So in short, I now have all the basic supplies to start my miniature painting adventure. To test and hone my painting skills and try out some of the tips given in the video tutorials, I used a previously printed tile from an older design version of the 3D Catan game that had some printing errors in my case. I must admit that I was surprised at how easy it was to achieve a subjectively good result while spending less than one hour painting the entire tile.
one eternity later. So all landscape tiles are painted right now and I'm really really liking how it looks. The tiles on average took one hour each to print and that time really depends on how much features there are on the tiles. For example the desert tile took under an hour but each and every one of the wood tiles took a lot longer because every single tree needs to be painted. I have one issue though. The black wash seemed very promising in the tutorials that I watched but I think I experimented too much with it on the grain tiles because they really look very dirty and smudged and the grain fields are lined with black lines and I'm not digging that look, especially not compared to the other tiles where there is little to no black wash used. Also the entire board is now very very green. The sheep and the wood tiles are already green and I tried to make the grain tiles a more yellowish green but it came out more like a lined color because the green paint just overpowered. So that together with my issue with the wash finish, I actually decided to repaint the grain tiles to make their base color yellow and cover up the ugly finish that I did with the black wash. In other good news, the bases I have finally finished printing and the magnets have arrived, so we can finally start assembling them. The bases are finished and were all printed in black. 37 times the same g-code day and night how i do not envy my ender tree being put through so much repetitive work by the way i have also slightly tweaked the design of the bases i have some cheap felt lying around and i want to glue that to the underside of the finished tiles the original base design however only has these six walls but no underside this hollow design could work even with the felt glued to the underside but I decided that 20 seconds in Tinkercad and a longer print time with a higher filament usage is a fair trade-off for something that I think will be a worthwhile upgrade. But before we're going to use any primer or paint on any of these bases we're going to insert the 220 magnets that we have. These magnets will keep the game tiles together even if your over enthusiastic friend puts a settlement right here and lets the game explode into 37 pieces. The magnets have arrived like this. Just a side note, I think these magnets stacked like this really resemble how nuclear fuel rods of uranium get lowered in the reactor. Just a thought. I'm going to make sure that all the magnets are aligned correctly by making just one large string of them. This way I can make sure that all the north and south poles are aligned. Like these two sides, they, these repel each other, so this one needs to swing around. So this is my line of magnets. And this is also the orientation that I will fit the first magnet in in the top hole. After that is secure, I will rotate my base slightly and add the next magnet in this exact same orientation. Only this way can I make sure that all the magnets have the same orientation. I said that the orientation of the magnets really plays a role. I will explain how. This is your base. It's hexagonal and your magnets will have to fit inside. It's very important that you pick the correct or a correct orientation. This can be either clockwise or anti-clockwise, but you should stick with that decision. I'm here going to draw it counterclockwise. My magnets are arrows and they will fit inside the base like this. Let's just assume that this is the North Pole and this is the South Pole. An adjacent space that also has the same orientation counterclockwise will have its magnets like this. You can see here that the North Pole and the South Poles are on the opposite sides at the interface. This means they will attract and form a bond, they will snap together and they will form one hole. If you, for instance, make another tile, but it has a clockwise arrangement, now you have a problem. 
As you can see here and here at the two interfaces, the north and the south poles are adjacent to each other. These, this tile will be pushed out by the other two tiles. So it doesn't matter if you pick a anti-clockwise or clockwise orientation of all your magnets, you just have to stick with one and keep with it. Only then will all the tiles stick to each other in the end. This is my string of magnets and they are now in my chosen position to insert into the bases. I break off a smaller string of the magnets and I just push one magnet in at a time. Once the other magnets are safely away, you can push in the clip. Push it in as far as you can and then have your trusty screwdrivers to push the clip in further. If you have one base finished and you check the orientation on each every side that they're all aligned correctly, you can use this one as a scaffold to build the other ones. You just take a blank base and you can base literally throw the magnet at it and just push it in the hole and it will be in the correct orientation to make the bases attract each other. Now you just take a clip and you push it in. This way you can make sure that it is always the correct orientation. I'm finally finished with painting all these tiles. Although it was a nice and relaxing hobby to have for the time being, I'm also very, very thankful that it's finally over, that it's finally finished. But it's not over yet. It's time to join the two. I will do this with a little bit of glue. These tiles fit in perfectly. It will seal off the interior of the bases, but it will give the final tile a very, very, very nice look. While we wait for the glue to dry, I want to bring up some things that I haven't mentioned up until now. 
On Thingiverse, I have also found the designs for the two achievement tokens, the longest road and the largest army. I have printed, primed and painted those as well, so they can be handed out once they are achieved. The player pieces are, you guessed it, also 3D printed in green, yellow, blue and red. In the original game the robber is just a boring black pawn. On Thingiverse I have found a robber that holds a lot of sheep and I thought it was very clever and very funny. But well, Catan is more than only sheep. So I redesigned that robber to hold one of every resource available, being ore, brick, wood, grain and a sheep on top. The number tokens are also invaluable for the gameplay. They will indicate at what dice rolls which resources are generated. The tokens can be found as a 3D printable design. I decided that this was a good opportunity for trying to print in two colors. I've also added a few tokens, but I'll explain the function of those in another video. This is how it will look. These are the player pieces and everything. But I have promised to put felt on the underside. And so that's what I will do now. To be fair and honest, it's not really felt. It's a synthetic felt-like material with a smooth underside, making it very glueable to other plastics. Um, and it was just lying around in the closet. And I was actually thinking of throwing it away until I got the idea of integrating it in my Catan board game. Let's put aside all the nice things and get to work. So the basic idea is this. I have my hexagonal tiles and I will cut a hexagonal piece of this felt material. This will then be glued together. There are several ways to do it, but I figured that the easiest and most practical way to achieve this is to make a sort of template. As template material I'm going to use a plastic sheet. This is a cover of a notebook that was completely full and we threw it out, but we took the plastic cover off. And as you can see there are already some cutouts that have been used as templates before. So I'm going to trace one hexagon on this plastic sheet, going to cut this out and then this will be the template to trace other hexagons on the felt material itself. You can just use any old ballpoint for this actually. It seems like you can't use any other old ballpoint for this, so just a sec. And I didn't even write on the tile. Now that we have our plastic templates, let's get our green felt and
voila, we're now officially the owner of a 3D printed, hand painted Catan board game. It took a lot of time in printing, priming, painting, assembling, spraying, everything. But looking at the finished product, it's really, really, really worthwhile. And it really goes to show that with some inspiration, creativity and persistence, no project is really too daunting to be able to be completed. Now I actually only need friends to play with. But how to make friends is probably a topic for another video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed my very, very first YouTube video. I will make more videos about the projects that I do. So please stick around if you want to watch more of these sorts of things. Please don't hesitate if you have a great idea for a project for me. Also, tell me in the comments if you like this 3D Catan set as much as I do. And especially comment if you think I could have done something different or better. And please let this video be an encouragement for you to start your own daunting projects. I know the most difficult thing is to just get started, but just do it. Stay creative, stay curious, and most of all, stay tuned for the next episode of Yaquibis Projects.